Yo. Hello. How's, how's everyone doing? Yeah, good. All right. Good. Just also, I have to remember to say start and then I have to remember to say end at the end so that John doesn't have to edit the videos. So, okay. Uh, yesterday, I attended an efficient R cohort and he used to write start and end in the chat. Yeah, that's what I have to do in Slack. Um, sorry for cutting off there, Rebecca. Uh, how, how are you doing today? No, I'm glad you rem you're remembering this important detail. He should be spending <laughs> as little time as possible on this. We yeah. will help remind you. What yeah. I'm going to do then is I'm going to type start in a second, and then I'll give like a one-line intro to what we're doing today, Shah, and then just pass it to you, okay. just so that when they get on YouTube, it's like okay. it kind of makes sense. Um, okay. So let's go. Okay, well, welcome to another week of the Tidyverse Docs. Uh, today we'll be looking at vectors. And um, there's a lot of functions in vectors, and they're pretty different to most deep lie functions, as I'm sure Shah is going to explain. And um, so, yeah, I'll just leave it straight over to Shah and enjoy. Thank you, Jack. Um, so we were studying functions from the data frames and those select filter and joins. Uh, these functions are actually only applicable to the vectors in the data frames or without the data frames. So we will start with the between. Uh, this between deals with the selecting a value in between some range values. So for example, I have an example vector from the numbers two to seven. So I am selecting value based on and it gives the output in the form of a boolean or that thing. So from two to seven, two, three, four, five, six. So we are getting these two as true. And these are getting true on the basis of the between function. These are This is actually not that kind of useful here, but if we use it in the filter, in the deep layer filter, we can filter the rows on the basis of this between function. So for example, in empty cars, I'm filtering those rows which have the cylinders four and six. Okay. Uh, and then we can use the, like for filtering, we can use the base R code as well instead of a deep layer. So it will give the same result, but in the form, an, in the form of an, a vector. Okay. Uh, and then, comes the, after that, it, it, uh, in the between function, it just works like the range which we used in the for loop. So just like we are getting some, uh, giving the value, maybe I didn't explain it in more detail. Like for example, in between we have these two arguments, left range value and right range value. This is why I'm putting the five and six here. Okay. And then comes the case match and case when. Uh, case when is actually very old, but case match is a bit newer one. And I have to actually update my deep layer. It was not on the latest version. It comes in the latest version, the case match comes in. Okay, and here I'm just putting an example. For example, in a case, uh, in a vector X, it has some values A, B, C, D, E from letters one to five, let's say. We are converting all of the values A and B to one on the basis of case when. And again, we have to write X. Again, we have to write X. So this is the actually the main difference. In the case match, notice I am writing X only once. And then now I'm writing just the arguments. C A con converted to one and then uh, convert C to two, D and E to three. So this is actually one main difference. In the case when we have to write on each step the name of the vector or a condition of a logical vector. So for example, in the empty cars, I am mutating new column, which is based on case when. So whenever the cylinder column has value four, we are getting uh, four cylinders in the output in the new column cylinder. Otherwise it is giving us the uh, 
na and values because i have and i haven't put that if the na has this this much value then put this so it's just the base case so in here for example whenever the cylinder has four it is putting four cylinders here but the syntax is in both of these is uh, i just wanted to get to show you the syntax here i am writing cylinder once again cylinder and again in the default argument there is a default argument we will discuss it after but in here in the in the case of case match i'm writing only one cylinder and then the condition directly the condition i will go to the conditions that's it so this is actually the main difference in this we do not have to define on each step the vector Okay, and the case match actually accepts one vector only because notice we are writing the cylinder only once. We cannot write like cylinder and then uh, something uh, horsepower. We cannot write like that. It will give us an error. Because for both of us, we have to write both of these vectors, we have to write and write a condition to accept on. So this is a, a, maybe we can say a drawback or whatever, but in case when we can write multiple conditions, like I can write cylinder here and then I can write horsepower here. So that's why, for example, I now I am going to Star Wars, just like the, they, they have used this in the example of the documentation. So in the Star Wars, we have this kind of column, name, height, mice, mass, and hair color and skin colors. So in here, I'm using case match, mutating the type column, whenever the species has this value, converting it to robot. And otherwise it is keeping the same values in the species column. So this is the same example of doing an operation on only the one vector. But if we want to do operations on multiple vectors, then we have to write case match again like here I am oper uh, doing operation on hair color, then here I'm doing operation on species. So in, in the case when we actually could write the operation on multiple vectors, but this is a different case in the case match. So for example, in this case here, hair color is converting to some other value. For example, NA is converting to another value and uh, yes, uh, we can actually convert NA values to some value here. here. So I could write, I, maybe I can try, but I'm not sure. As character one, convert NA to one. Yes. We can con actually write the NA to some values and then we can do operations on multiple vectors. It is doing the operation on the species and on the hair color, both of these. And this dot default argument, yeah, it comes in in here. Dot default actual egg argument is actually if we do not have a value, for example, if we do not want to convert a case, keep the default value which is in the previous vector. It's it's works like that. Okay. And then so uh, one can I yeah. ask, um, you know, with case when saying yeah. you do like multiple columns. Yeah. That's as in what, what kind of stuff would you do when you want to use multiple columns? Okay. So type equals, right. Yeah. I see down here. Yeah. I, so, yeah. Did you see in the docs? It's like, um, the, the ellipse, what the ellipsis is like defined as in, in the case match versus case, case when, like, is the reason why, if you like. Because um, in here, you've got like the first argument is the ellipsis. And then in case match, you've got the first argument is the dot X, which is the vector. Yeah. And you, yeah, then you've got the ellipsis. Yeah. And here, so, it just. Yeah, I suppose they have to be different. Like, um, In but here, it's, it's a uh, sequence. And yeah, I can see that they have to be different. Um, but I then I wonder if you like rework case when to be more like. No, I, no. 
yeah, I just thought I'd flag it anyway, because I was thinking in my head whether I can see why it has to be like this for case match, but then does yeah. that mean it be like it for case when, or should they just keep it the same? Because then I guess it couldn't do the same stuff case when does now. Yeah. Okay, and uh, but we were you were saying that we can put multiple in here. That's I have tried it. Like I'm selecting doing operations on the basis of multiple vectors in the data frame, the height and the species, and then gender, and then the the other remaining values I'm putting it as other. So in in this case, we can do operations on multiple vectors. So for example, the type is converted to other if we do not meet any of the condition given here. Otherwise, it's it is converted to large here, for example. It comes in handy in that case. Okay. Uh, and I was saying that we could we could write a value in the place of NA. I'm writing an as character because the other columns hair color is a character, but we can put a value instead of an integer here. In the integer column, it works in the integer columns as well, so it's not dependent only on the characters. Okay, so in here we are converting NA to zero. That's why this NA has become zero. Uh, so he's yeah i think the dot default thing is nice um, yeah dot like skipping so much... the previous value yeah and it's it's like it's way more intuitive than writing something that evaluates to true and then make yeah. it something right? yeah it's much nicer um uh, okay and then there is an argument dot p type yeah, and dot default, there is another thing. If we do not write dot default, it will write NA in, in place of that. So for example, if I am not using in the case when I'm not using any dot default, then it is producing NA in place of that. So if you want to write NA is equal to something, then you can write it in case match. But in case when I, I'm not sure you can do that. Like you do not have an argument in case when to write something for example if i, I write you it probably here. have to do like is dot na like or then it hmm. oh it works no it doesn't work it shouldn't know which column it's doing that for at the moment right No, it's uh i'm trying to yeah yeah so you're, you're making a new column type and you're doing yeah. it from lots of different columns yeah but we haven't specified where it should be looking yeah around. yeah you're yeah, right <laughs> yeah but you could do it like is dot na and then the brackets followed by like a column name um, but you may, I don't know if you, I guess you can't do everything in is.na because it's not tidy select, but maybe you could pick or something. Um, that, like that should, whenever it's, yeah, whenever it's na in the height column, it should now be of the, or not. Can look at some other examples maybe? I'm not sure, but I have tried it in case match. It works perfectly in this, in that case. Yeah, just here. Uh, we were using it before, like using NA and then just. Yeah, is in case match, you specify yeah. the vector, right? Yeah. So it's always looking in that column. So whenever it finds an NA in that column, well, it yeah. lets you say whenever that's an NA, we'll make, make it something else. Mm -hmm. But in case when it doesn't know, it shouldn't know where to look. I, I don't know if you could do like pick everything. I, like, 
and then do, so if you did like pick everything and then like a, a dot x is like is dot na i guess i don't know what the exact syntax would be i'd have to sit there and figure it out for a minute but yeah that would let me do the same thing uh let's do it for example only for the height and then we can it will be easy to understand like is n a height and then convert it to other do uh, we have any na's in height in in star wars yeah we have we have i i remember yeah for example uh, yeah. here we have some in so let's say if the height is uh less than 200 then convert that to we'd have to get rid of the to 300 right um yeah so you'd have to have just the height less than 200 rather yeah. than oh wait but that's 200 minus 300 at the moment or... no no it's not minus it's uh till they but they can't be different converting. types right so the other you can put it in quotes, I guess, if you want to do characters. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm on I'm on pretty small screen. Uh yeah, okay. So then if but if you then count other, you know, if you pipe this into like at the bottom af after the mutate, if you pipe and count type, you should get the number that are other. Oh no! So there's an NA that is two. It's it is not converting to NAs to the other. For example, in the third pair, it is converting. Okay, yeah, it did. I was going to say like, you... but some of them are not, or some of them are. Some of them are just NAs because they don't know what to do with things two hundred or greater. Yeah, yeah. It I think was that 200. code is totally working fine. I'm still confused as to why the longer one was, um, problematic. Okay, so actually this NA something, it's, that, that, it's different, that, right? It's like, but It's like Rebecca says though, it's just whenever height equals 200. So we'd have to have it like height is less than or equals 200. Set that to yeah. 300. And yeah. if it's any other, and then that should fix. Those well, no, and then you need to do something with things that are over 200. That's all. Yeah, yeah we are not doing it, but just we want to try to test the NA if it works. Yeah. So the syntax is a bit different. For example, I have written NA and then try to write it to other, but it doesn't work. Yeah. Because in the case where it was from, working. Yeah. What Jack said earlier about it not knowing where it's operating on that. So in this case, it can work. Okay. Yeah. So you, but you would want to, I guess you'd count type in here um, and it would show you how many NAs, how many others you've got, how many NAs. And then how many three hundreds? If you yeah, type inside sure. there. Or we can type that. No, so just type, type like If you if you count TYP, it will count the the values in the column count. And then yeah, so now you had eleven people who were or eleven things that were like not fitting under two hundred or NA. Yeah. And then yeah, you've got six others. So there were six NAs in the in the vector. And there are some remaining values which are more than 200. Only yeah. six, eleven. They're either 200 or more than. Yeah. Because there is I was, you know, with case match. Um I suppose if you wanted to, to work on multiple columns, you could pivot longer the columns that you wanted to put them all into one column. Do some stuff, but then it's like, why? <laughs> why would you maybe do that? Um, but but I was, only example I could see in the documentation, they were saying you have to write multiple case matches to do operations on multiple vectors. But your idea maybe it can work, yeah. Yeah, I think it would be more more hassle than it's worth. Like you'd probably be better off just writing multiple case matches, and then it's just like explicit, and you're not going to make silly mistakes or anything. Um, yeah, I think these are cool. Like case match especially is like, is really nice. And I, I only realized today, so like, you know, you get those code problems where it's like, I don't know, 
they were, I mean, when I first started learning to code, it was stuff like check if this number's even or odd. And with case when you can just do that with like the modulus and like the vector modulus two, if it's zero, put it even and stuff. So it's, I think you could, some of these vector functions will be really nice for the stuff like um, art of code or the Christmas code thing, uh, the advent of code where you don't necessarily want the data frame. But yeah, I'll shut up. Um, so I thought, what was the solution to the longer case win? I feel like I missed uh, it. In here? Yeah, I thought there was, I thought there was something awry earlier when you ran this. No? It, it was the NA thing, no? Or... Is that it? I was doing it like convert height if there is an NA and then convert it to something. But it, before it was like we just had NA and make yeah, that stuff. That was it. Can and, you hit run on that? Why was my brain still confused about this? Okay, that looks great. Cool. All right. I don't know. Cool, cool. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, but syntax is a bit different, but it works in both cases. Okay. And uh, then comes the like, we can write a custom function to use the case van. So in the documentation, they use this kind of a function to case character type on the same data set. Um, and then the function only has the case van, one case van. And we apply it on the data set. We give some values and then it converts it to, it only gives the values for the, for the data set, which we want to, con for the value which we want to convert. So, we can write in the in the custom function, then we can apply this. Okay, and then there is an argument uh, dot p type in both um, in case when as well, and in, in case uh, match, both of these have an, have an argument case dot p type, which actually deals with if you want to uh, get the output of the desired output, which I understood, but and it says in the documentation an optional prototype declaring the desired output type if not supplied the output type will be taken from the common type of all right hand side inputs and dot default so if we want for example i had in the above type which was actually a character vector so if i want to convert that to numeric vector i'm not sure how it will work I've tried it, but it only working on this given command. Like for example, the, the previous, all of the code of the same, dot default is actually putting species to the previous value. And then for example, if I want to convert this species to let's say as factor, It's giving me some random errors. I don't know what I am doing wrong. So in the P type, I have a confusion. What what this is actually related to? If anyone yeah, wants to, what's the for? You know, if you click show trace back, does it say where? Oh, it's a... show trace back. Okay. Uh, you'd have to probably sit and study that. But then, yeah. <laughs> so, hmm. But would it be is the is as dot character species? Yeah. Like, what's that? Um, is, would that be the right way to do it? Because yeah, another this... yeah. Um, what about if you change your default to as dot character as well? What it it it's actually 
it's it is character by default because yeah. I'm doing operations. Um but can you specify p type and dot default? What does that didn't that just work though? That's yeah, when they're the same thing. I mean, if you specify the dot default here, yes, and then you specify the dot p type as the same thing, like what's it supposed to be doing? I see, I see, I see. So I have deleted, for example, dot default right now. It is giving something different result, like NA and only the only this code is working. Uh, maybe the robot is also working. Did they use yes. dot e-type in any of the things, any of the examples? No. That's why I've confused. They didn't do okay. use any p-type. I have found it one p-type in the later function. Maybe I can show you. Uh, they are using it in the, yeah, here. This this was an example given in the yeah okay that makes sense though because everything that's in there in the the outputs right is covered so it's currently a character yes. and it's saying turn this output into a factor and make the levels and those levels are all of the unique values here yeah um, ordering it so um, what if you go back to the earlier version where yeah. yeah okay so if you have so the first three things all return characters right if you yeah. change dot p type to factor i bet it'll work it'll change things but i think the i think all of the other things still have to match and then you could either and then you could switch them with this it. final function so either the first three could all be factor and you could change them to character or I don't think, around, but I don't think they can I don't think the first things can disagree that's yeah I don't think here you can say factor of species because yeah it's factoring uh, the output not the yeah you wouldn't want the input because you've got in type you've got like large which is something that we're putting in yeah which is not going to be in species um You'd want to, like, if you knew the, if you, if you, like, rare, delete dot default dot p type and the comma before, and you count the values that are output here, then you could presumably put in dot p type equals, and then you could say, like, a factor, and you could say the levels are the unique values that come out of this. So I was trying to understand what the P type is actually doing. It's it's um so it's it's a, what it says is like it's a prototype or whatever. I think you can kind of ignore that, but it's just saying um make my output follow this schema, like turn it into a specific data type. And mm -hmm. it seems so if you were to delete the count and the type now and you put dot p type equals factor and then you said levels equal um like a vector of large robot and na that to me seems like it should, it should and pass. then we had to provide levels as well in that case maybe yeah yeah the levels here but i don't, don't you can't put species now i think you, you'd have to just put the levels that are the output here in type um large robot and i'm not sure we will write a name i think yeah i don't know you'd probably have to on uh okay so they're just okay now it's working yeah and it's like it's a factor and it's kept the na's as stuff mm -hmm. now it's converted to factor okay now i understood i was trying to like uh thinking that it is dealing with the data types only but it is not it's kind of a putting the factor factor things in here 
And uh, yeah, I could see when you'd want to use this, like say if you know that you're going to plot this stuff afterwards and you want it to be a factor that follows like your levels or you want a group split or you want to do something that's it's good to know in advance what the order is going to be, then you set it as a factor. I'm not really sure how else you would use this unless it was like make an integer. Say if you had like, but then... Uh, so that's yeah, not yeah. going to work because I still think all, it needs to be as dot character there since everything else is character. Yeah. Except species is factor. Yeah. Yeah, I think it makes, I think the taking character things and. Hmm? Wait, I'm not sure because dot default is actually when we write if we want to get the by default, but we are specifying two vectors here yeah but what are we trying to do default now at, like at this point sorry this is just like set what the value is if it hasn't been covered yeah um but then hmm. oh it can't handle that because your factor doesn't have all the levels accounted for then yeah That's otherwise fine. we have to put on uh take into account the species factors or we can write manual factor just like we did here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd have to it's know like in advance that. what's coming yeah. out and you'd have to cover them all in your levels. But I wonder if you could use factor Wait. levels equal like the unique values in type. No, I had tried that before. It doesn't work. <laughs> but we, let's try it. Unique of species. Oh, no, of type, sorry. Type, sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't tried it. Yeah, maybe. I don't know if it at the runtime, I don't know if it knows what type is because type doesn't exist until yeah. later. Or shouldn't. Um uh, but do you have to do you have to like index in no, because it's data masking, isn't it? It's in mutate. No, I don't know. I can see how it would work the other way, like when you know what the levels are going to be, you just specify them, but mm -hmm. I guess as well, there's like, you want, you might want to coerce stuff to an integer sometimes, like, you know, it's going to be a double or a numerical, whatever floating point, And you just want to make sure that it comes out as an integer. So do you just put dot P type equals like integer or whatever? Yeah, because it's, it was working at, on the case of as character. So it can work in both ways. Okay. Yeah, no, it's a bit. I was getting confused. Okay, it's better. Uh, okay, and then comes the quilts. I don't know how it's pronounced, but it deals with the first non-missing values in the in each position in a vector or a number of vectors. So, for example, in the star or hair colors, I am converting the missing values to red. So these are all the missing values. That's just an uh, operation on one vector here so for example let's do it on the multiple vectors in here i just wanted to show there are in which positions the na values are and then i apply the operation uh, with the this function on two vectors here and then using the p type it will combine both of these vectors in one vector and convert the missing values to uh, characters. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. So instead of NAs, you've got nons. Yeah. And, uh, and then we can look at the like, what is the output type? It is giving us combined vector of both of these. Uh, okay, and then what we added before in the description that it will deal with the first non-missing values. So in the documentation, it, they are giving an example or maybe I've searched it on the internet. I am giving it three vectors, but it will take only the first non-missing value from the three vectors. So, for example, the output is this because 
this vector as three three, but it will not take into account this four or this three, three three, and then n a, but n is not taken into account by the, this function. So seven comes in, and then one comes in, and eight is ignored because one is the first non-missing value. So in that case, it can become handy to select the non-missing values in your vector. Yeah, I can. I can't think of an e easy use case for like multiple vectors, but I can see it could be useful. That's quite yeah. nice. Okay, and then there is a requirement that the vector should be of same size. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense to com com uh, compare multiple vectors of the different sizes because how will it will compare the missing values between the vectors? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I, I then suppose, oh, sorry for for this yeah. one you. Should, uh, coalesce like when you're using three vectors or whatever it's that it would be useful when you've got like some hierarchical data type or whatever or something like something where you know that the first vector if it exists is the most important yeah and then if not take the second and if not take the third and if not take the you know however long you want to go which would be pretty cool if i could ever find a use case for it <laughs> yeah but sometimes we have like uh, columns in a data frame and we want to get first non-zero value we can convert n's to zeros and then we can say let's get first non-zero value from the data in that case it can become mm -hmm. handy yeah nice. okay uh, and then consecutive id this the concept of this is that like for example you have two vectors and you want to change value in the first vector when there is a change in the second vector in that case this consecutive id is basically helpful so for example in the star wars we have this na and this guy. again i am uh, showing the default output and then i am operating the consecutive id so why this is one two two because look at blonde it gets the value one then it comes na and na because na and na have are actually the same values that's why the value is not changing it's only two two when there is none and then brown the value is changing from three to four so and in and a, another useful case in this that the the value does not remain identical for example, the brown has a value of uh, four, yeah, four, but this brown, which is the last value in the vector, has a value 54. So it doesn't get the same value, but the value keeps on changing when there is a change in the vector. This is the concept of consecutive ID. I had no idea this existed. That's very handy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah it's new isn't it and it's it's really useful because uh i remember i was doing the operations on something like micro data and i it had row names like long row names but the row names were changing with just one letter or two letters so i had to add a vector in the column in the data frame whenever the row name is changing so in that case it, it can become handy yeah and you had to use like lag or lead right and then come some that it yep. equals the previous one and stuff yeah it's also coming up the lag and lead okay and uh, you can apply on multiple vectors as well for example i'm generating an id column from the star wars whenever these two vectors are changing so for example id column has column value one because this has this one it changes to two because both of the values in two vectors are changing let's go to some other example where there is a large difference the value is 22 because both of the values are identical in both of the vectors so let's find the case when one of the value in one vector is changing but other is not changing yeah it, it can be helpful yeah in here for example uh none is remaining same but the value in eye color is changing hair color is remaining same 
that's why the id column is changing so it will take into account the values in both of the vectors if we give it to multiple vectors so in that case the consecutive id also taken into account in that um okay yeah it's just the explanation which i've written here uh, okay and then comes the cumulative all and cumulative any and cumulative mean it's uh it will give the logical vector output in the cumulative any and cumulative all but in cumulative mean it's it will give the output in the form of like in or it will work on the integer data set because it's calculating the mean so in here for example in the height column in the star wars the output is a logical vector it is a cumulative sum of the any values for example i'm putting the condition that if the height cumulative sum uh, of any values in the height data set is less than 170 that's why i'm getting false here but if 172 plus 167 is uh, less than 70 it is not it is opposite to that what we wanted to do that's why we are getting all of the rest of the values guessed true so it's it's a kind of what we understood in if any and if all if you remember we have i think covered that before yeah so the basic operation is based on the or operator but in in cumulative all we are moving to the and operator like it will uh, uh, yeah, uh, just like the previous, I don't remember which one, which was giving us the logical vectors true and false, it will be handy if we want to filter on the basis of this. So in here, I'm filtering on the basis of these outputs. So that's why 167 is in the output. This 167 is in the output because we got a true for that. But we did not get the 172 row the first row so it's, in that case yeah it's kind of like which or like yeah which which word but it's just a nice way of doing it in deep life stuff i guess yeah okay and the cumulative all is actually an opposite of that case because it will create a cumulative sum of the all of the values of the rest of the values just like that and it will then apply our condition on that and then we can actually filter on the basis of that. That's why we get nothing, no row, because all the values are false on our condition. Uh, and then cumulative mean, it's it's actually a cumulative sum of the next of the values. Uh, like for example, 172 will remain 172, but 169 is not that 169. We, we had 167, yeah, 167 so this cumulative mean is actually if i can write yeah 172 plus 167 the cumulative mean should be yeah this one so it is actually the sum of the next of all of the values and then it will produce this cumulative mean for all the values in the vector but these NA are because of that, because uh, uh, the next values are NA. So if previous and the next value, we plus that and add the NA, maybe because of that, it's producing NA, but I'm not sure. Or maybe there are some NA values. Yeah, it should but, be, right? Um, but then, yeah. so you can't do NA dot RM equals true because it doesn't seem to take any arguments except the vector. Yeah. Okay, uh, so this is a different concept in that case. Okay, and then comes the descending. We usually use it in the arrange in the, so it is, is only useful to arrange the vectors on the basis of descending order. Um, yeah, it's just the, only the, that case in that and only applicable to numeric vector, obviously. 
Okay, and then come the if else underscore else, and then the if else. And they say in the documentation that the if else is the vectorized form, so it will be faster as compared to the base R if else. So it's it's kind of handy because sometimes when we try to find the solution for case when people have commented that you can use the if else as well if you are not familiar with the case when so in that case it can become handy like we put the condition then we say if the condition is true put this otherwise put this uh, mm -hmm. it is so uh, yeah i was thinking but you know with the there's no narm equals true uh yeah. not sure maybe there is so yeah back in the come in i think there's not like if you coalesce first to make the na value like yeah. a zero and then you do it it won't be the same as na dot rm equals true like it won't be the same as remove nas because it will still count the zero towards the sum so yeah i wonder why yeah. they haven't put na dot rm equals true in uh, there's no i guess in here you Sorry, can put... I, i'm still back up thinking about um the come mean Sorry. <laughs> I was, yeah i don't get why they oh yeah i see what you mean to do it with if else instead um but i am thinking about uh dot if else like if we but no it doesn't make sense like if we want to like and a removes equal to true it, it, it there is no argument is equal to and a dot remove like we want to apply our condition or all the values which are not na so if the height is something not equal to na then do this condition uh but there is no argument and a dot remove Anyways, it's just like uh, I, I haven't put an example here to uh, compare the uh, system uh, to use system dot time argument to compare the timing, the run timing of the both of the arguments. But it can become handy if we have a large data frame and then we want to apply some condition of if underscore else and if else only. And we compare the time, like how much time the if underscore else is taking in the other one because they say that the if underscore else should be faster because it is the vectorized form okay um so in here we are using like all of the heights which are less than 100 put a short in here otherwise write tall okay and then there's an argument of missing for example if there is any in your data set you can write something in place of that so it is converting all the na values to missing for example yeah in here any values is converted to missing so and for example does this work on numeric data set i'm not sure numeric data type it should work. Missing should be written as four fifty six, maybe. Yeah, it is working. Okay. So if we want to write in place of any something, there's an argument of missing. Um, I never knew about that. Thank you. <laughs> um. Then even another argument I forgot. Uh, underscore else the other argument is size yeah size is actually an optional size declaring the desired output size it deployed this override the size of the condition okay so maybe the we can play with the size but i haven't tried it or i haven't given any example here okay so and this example is the base na and it will 
yeah they, they say that it will convert the uh, it will preserve the data size data types if else this new one will preserve the data types but the older one will not so in here we said that we have a letter uh, this one we have a vector of let letters from one to ten uh, and the output is so how how will we compare compare the outputs like what what is the difference between this output and this output well the first one you gave it a factor but it returned a numeric uh, yeah and the second one you it has a yeah yeah okay, okay. factor yeah, okay. and it returns a factor mm -hmm. okay so uh okay, okay and then comes the lag and lead so it's it's uh, useful when we want to compare the previous values to the next value so lag will deal with the previous value and the lead will deal with the next values so uh, the input arguments is actually a vector and then the number of required lags or number of required leads you want so you want to compare not the previous value but previous of that so there should be a difference of two or whatever you want so that's why i've written it two here so it will come uh, add a column behind which will uh, let me do it again yeah so in behind we are getting all of the outputs from the height data set but there is a lag of two so these two values are moved down in here and then in a head which is using lead so we are getting these two values are deleted and we are starting from here so these are opposite of that lag and lead so in that case i am putting it two here so for example if i write it four the lag or lead will be differentiated by four we'll get four n is here so it can be handy i'm not sure where it is useful because i haven't used it with the transactive id but it will be take like a piping of something and then it can be useful but this is a base example given in the maybe the documentation or i have found it somewhere okay and then you can add a pad like uh, for example you want to write zero in here and then start the operation so the pad works in that in that case so i have added a pad of zero uh, by default it is zero but you can write something uh, i'm not sure maybe yeah so default argument deals with padding it's not the default which was in case when okay uh i haven't tried it but if we write a vector does this accept it like we want to add a vector in our column in the data frame ahead before the values where with the value start it can be handy if we want to vec add a, add some values in one of the columns oh it doesn't work sorry <laughs> okay uh yeah what i say the three um like lag three instead of yeah. one but keep the vector there i'm just curious Maybe. uh no i'm saying about adding a value instead of n is yeah but say say like um so you, you put n equals say n equals two and then you put default equals a two length vector is i think what rebecca's saying yeah that maybe mm -hmm. let you then put in that vector because they i don't just... know that it'll work but i just you, right now yeah, i feel like you're giving it three but the default is one um... yeah that's why it was no step thing yeah <laughs> So what if you what if you have two NAs that it's trying to fill and you give it two values? So if you lag n equals two. Yeah, maybe. 
Yeah, so where you'd have yeah, to, exactly. you add like a comma and before equals two and put N and then you put the vector that you want to test, right? Like and uh, two numbers. It will tell, it will, it will let you know. But then I question maybe why you'd want to, why you'd want to do this. Just like if, if you want to replace some values, so it can be something. Anyways, uh, in the, just like the same arguments in lag and lead, you can put a padding N at the start or at the end. Uh, okay. And then you can, First value is deleted, yeah. Using the ordered by to supply a vector. Okay. So for example, we have a default called this one. Then we are adding a one, which is a lag argument of one lag. Then we are ordering by the birth year, this one. Because birth year values are from high to low, but this output is maybe kind of confusing because we are ordering by something. Maybe we can do that. The documentation it will be better. So, yeah, ordered by, doesn't put in, in the, what if it is in the, this one. Right. In this case, the order by isn't a function, right? It's an argument. No, no, it's an argument. Yeah. This one. Yes. And so optional it's secondary. It's just expecting you to tell it which um which column to order. Which yeah. Vector. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That is it's it's used for that. It's a uh, uh, it's kind of like they put the arguments in the documentation, but they never put an example in here. So sometimes we get confused, but they are using it because like dot P type, I was searching on the internet, but I could not find an example, which uh, someone has used that. Yeah. And I there is no example in the documentation as well. So, <laughs> so order by, is that not, you're just, it's like, you could just do that yourself before you start by using like a range or something. Like if you were to arrange by a column, say, I don't know, Star Wars height, and then yeah. do the lag, well, you'd get one output or like lead or lag. But then if you were to arrange by a different column, well, you'd get a different output. So this order by presumably just allows you to do that inside the function. Yeah, exactly. I um, yeah, not sure if I'd ever use <laughs> ever use it. But. But yeah, they say in an optional scan the vector that finds the ordering to use when applying the lag or lead. So, uh, I'm not sure it will work on the character vectors, but if applied, this must be of the same size as the original vector. So in here, for example, to have this. Okay. Year and value. Okay, let's do this operation on this one. We're mutating in the this data frame, which has a uh, lag or something. Yeah, I but that's I think that's what it's saying, right? It's like it's saying this is that output. If you print right now, like the ob the right object that you just made, a year, a range, right? Here. Is it saying they're equivalent? Those two things, or what's it saying? The, no. They have used an order by, so I'm trying to understand mm. what, what is the order by is actually doing. Because if, if the order by was on the basis of a year, it, the 2003 should have been here. 
Yeah. I don't actually know what it's saying. Hmm. I might actually just get this, put it in my interpreter as well. Um, but we are about to come to the end. I, I have to hop off pretty sharpish. Um, oh, I, I get a different output um, to yours, I think. I don't know. Wait, wait, Maybe you can do exactly the same. I got it from documentation, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I do. Um, so what is it actually doing? So. Ordering by year. Adding a lag value, yeah. Lag value of zero. So before we had, I guess you have to look at three different things, right? So you've got to look at scrambled, which had, if you just do the lag on scrambled. I cannot imagine when you would want to do this. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh kind of confusing but in, in, in uh, this example is actually uh, making uh, it kind of confusing because they are using order by okay they are ordering in on the basis of the year and then they're using a range like why you are using a range after that if you if you have ordered by year well so because the lag is taking the value right but it's looking at year for which yes. value it should take yes so I feel like a range is just helping you kind of see what the difference in those two data frames are. Like you can see that previous year value is not just, oh wait, no, I'm confusing myself. Yeah. So like the I understood it. <laughs> so if you, if you, um, I'll pop the code in, where's my chat thing gone? Okay, so never mind. This does make sense. It's just as if you wanted to arrange your data frame. Yeah. But you yeah, don't want to actually either. bother mixing like either because it's giant or because there's some other reason it's ordered in that way. It's just skipping the arrange step. But, but it changes the change. If you don't set a default, it changes which year's value becomes NA. But it doesn't reorder your data set explicitly. So it, it changed like... I get, I kind of get what it's doing. It's like, it's reordering the stuff, calculating the the thing, the lag or whatever, but then it's putting you back in the order that you already had. Right. Uh, in case there's some reason that they're like two orderings that make sense. You don't have to. Yeah. But, uh, cause okay. If you, but then if you, if you know what it's going to be, so say if you say previous year equals lag value, order by equals year, and you put, is it, isn't there a default thing in, in lag? What's the dot a default equals? So what would the value otherwise be? Sorry, for 2001, would it be zero? Yeah. Hmm. Because I put it in the chat as well, but I don't know. I think I'm gonna have to look at this and get my head around it. Um, but I think, because there's okay. a long way to go in vectors. We yeah, should, yeah, it's, uh... yeah, we should call it, it's here and then we'll pick up next week um so i'm just going to pop end in the thing for john so yeah thank you for presenting all that yeah it's, uh, it's uh i guess it will take the next our session as well yeah and then let's do it again next week because there's still a lot <laughs> there's still like a lot of functions in um no, the, the, there is only six or seven remaining but okay let's say we can take next and then we have we are done with the applier yeah i i make it out there's more like 15 like um bro i just have them all typed out and you've got like n distinct what did we do no we didn't do that n a f m first last enter order by percent rank Cumulative disk, recode, recode factor, row number, min rank, dense rank. 
are all in the vectors thing. Um, yes. Some of them are really simple and like don't maybe need so much. But there, there was another thing from last week that I meant to come back to at the start that I forgot. Um, and it was that join by thing. Do you remember we were looking at join by and there was like between, within, loads of other stuff. Like if you type in to deep player, like three deep player followed by three dots, and then you do join by, you get a load of these functions, which are um, like eval join by dollar and like pass join by dollar. Um, and there's another one. I think it's like args join by dollar or something. Um, Can we and, look at that next week? I think it's yeah, a we, conversation. We, we could maybe go in. I was going to say, like, do you guys want to look into that or do we just like acknowledge? I think we should. It's not intuitive. It's new. Yeah. Cool. Let's flag it for. I never knew we can write three multiple. <laughs> what is the, like, this is that, they're the unexported functions of a package so like it's actually really useful sometimes when you don't get how something's working to mm -hmm. look at the source code right and then you see like it's calling all these functions you know like, well what that what's that <laughs> like, that doesn't exist anywhere they're normally like you get them by the triple dot um and it's a warning if you're exporting, if you're making a package and you think you're not exporting functions, right, by like not putting Roxygen to tag and export, well, they're probably still being exported. Well, they're not being exported. They're still open to other people through the triple dots, but they're not in the namespace. Um, but yeah, let's flag, well, I'll flag that as a, as a comeback to the next week then. Um, and then, yeah, let's let's leave it there I, i'll leave it to you Shah, to to sign up if you want like if you want to present the rest or if you want someone else to just say in the channel that you don't want to but i i think it's yours as a default to present the rest of vectors and you just let us know if like you don't want to or can't or something uh, this file already has the rest of the examples so cool. i have already prepared that yeah okay nice so if you if you can make it next week then i'll put you in as the sign up sheet so that it all renders properly for John. Yeah. Thank okay. You. Sweet. Okay. Well. Thank you. Uh, yeah. See you guys next week. Yep. Bye. See you.